It's a new era for UCF women's basketball, and that all begins with the first-year head coach, Satya Messer. Really excited to hear about what she can do here in year one. And Coach Messer joins us right now here from Orlando in the American Studios. Coach Messer, welcome to the American. It's so great to have you. Seeing some practice going on there behind you. But, uh, Coach, I'm curious about this motto that you have for your team this year, won't stop. What's behind that? Well, you know, first of all, thank you guys for having me. I am super excited about joining the American Conference. Uh, but our motto, as you can see here on my wrist, is won't stop. Uh, for me, it's we won't stop. Um, as you look um, around our teams, um, our goal is to win championships. When you look at the players we're returning and the transfers that we have, we want to build on the foundation that's been set here and we won't stop. We will do whatever it takes to uh, even enhance that further. So that's won't stop and on the court, off the court, in the community, everything we need to do to make our program uh, first class. Coach, the media has some questions for you. So we're gonna send things over to Tom Fenstermaker with the American who will field those questions. Thanks Morgan. Right. And, Looking forward uh, to it. Thanks, Morgan and uh, Coach. Welcome to the American. Our first uh, question will be from Kyle Nash of the Black and Gold Banner app. Coach Messer, great to see you again. You know, there's been a lot of talk about all the challenges that you're dealing with rebuilding, with retooling, with recruiting and all of that. What's some of the advantages you might have enjoyed in that situation, though, versus having an established group? Well, I think the advantages is, uh, one, it's an advantage to always have an opportunity to uh, put your own stamp on things. So for me, it's an advantage of my players buying into um, what we're doing here. And, and that's standing for character, academics, and basketball. Um, an advantage is being able to recruit now and say eventually, um, you know, we're going to the Big 12. That's an advantage. And also just UCF. I mean, it's a beautiful campus. Um, it's amazing people here. And so, yeah, we have challenges, but, you know, being at UCF is an advantage within itself. All right, our next question will be from Trace Trotko of uh, Sons of UCF. Uh, Coach, good to see you again. How would you describe your style of play? What will we see from your players on the court this season? Uh, my, my style of play is that we want to play positionless basketball. When you look at the players that we have, uh, we can play. All players can intertwine one through four easily. Uh, so positionless basketball. And then we want to get after you on the defense end. We want our defense to transition into easy baskets and a really gritty, hard-nosed defensive team. All right, our next question will be from Jason Beatty of the Orlando Sentinel. Coach, great to see you again. What, what do you hope to accomplish in your first year in Orlando? Obviously, you know, you always set your sights on the championships, but bigger picture, what do you hope to accomplish in year one? Uh, for year one for us is, again, I want our players to um, give their best every day, every game, and I think that, um, you know, we're used to, as you, when you look at it, um, I have a championship background. Um, the return, the, the transfers that I recruited um, have been part of championships within conference. And uh, we have five returning players here that was on last year's team. Uh, not a lot of minutes in playing, but they're buying into what I want. So my goal is championships. I, I think you, you have to set your, 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 your goals high um, um, and because that's what our team is buying into. And so my goal here is um, on realistically is, is trying to uh, get us a championship, a conference championship. Um, and we know that we have a long ways to go, but the good news is that we got a lot of time to get there. All right, we'll have a follow-up from Kyle Nash at the Black and Gold Banner Act. 
Hey, so with all the uh, opportunity and work that you've been putting together, you know, you do have a, a, a debut mere weeks away. Who have been some of the standouts you've seen at practice that really stepped up to the plate to help get the Satya Messer system in place? Well, that's a great question. Uh, Maya Burns as a, a player that's key. She gradu um, transferred from Georgia Southern, was a graduate transfer, um, averaged 11 points last year, and she's really doing a great job in practice. Um, um, uh, Nay is doing good from Howard. Um, she was MEAC uh, freshman of the year, was um, on an NCAA team last year, and she's really uh, buying into what we're doing. So remember those two names. Uh, of course, Morgan Wagu, who is um, a junior college player. She was from um, Florida Gulf Coast Community College, averaged over 20 points last season. And uh, she's, she's doing a great job for us offensively. And I, I think those three names are key players that you can, uh, you, you can look for this season. All right, we'll go back to Trace Trotko from Sons of UCF. Uh, Coach, you talked about the returning players, five of them. What's the challenge for those players, those holdovers? They, they buy into your system, but it's a different system. What are you seeing from them so far in the uh, ramp up to the start of the season? Well, the challenge for them is, um, as you said, you know, buying into the system. It's a totally different uh, system. Um, but the challenge, too, is you, when you look at the returning players, there was only one that averaged over 10 minutes played last season. So uh, they wasn't impact players, but they are hard workers. And so uh, I like that part about them. And I think that um, they're going to get in and do the things we need to get done. So I think the challenge for them is just experience. Um, you have one player that's played significant minutes last season, and that's Destiny Thomas, who led our team last season in rebounding. Uh, but again, Destiny wasn't in a role um, to be an impact offensive player. And um, we're asking her to do that. So I think that's a challenge within itself. And of course, um, the four other returners, just not having played significant minutes, but they have an opportunity now. Um, and it's just, you know, continue to work hard and uh, hopefully we can uh, work them in and, and they be able to be impact players in this program. Our final Zoom question will come back from uh, Kyle Nash. So, Coach, you did mention uh, the Big 12 being in the future of UCF. Obviously, this being your first season, you're getting ready for this season. I understand all of that. But how much of this season, how much time have you spent kind of making this a stepping stone from the American to the Big 12? And how much of that is an uh, uh, influence on what you're doing this year? Well, I, I would say the biggest influence that I've seen immediately is in recruiting. Um, so for this, this class, I am recruiting Big 12 players. I'm able to walk in and say, hey, listen, you're going to be in a Power 5 conference. Um, and so I think that, that that helps us get get the prospects on the phone and the rest is up to us to finish the deal. So recruiting has been a big impact uh, for us. And we just, you know, the, the mindset overall is – it's different because uh, you have to think about, like, listen, this is Big 12, Power 5. And that's what we're t talking to our kids every day about um, is that, yes, we've done well, but that there is a higher level, too. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm putting that blueprint down now. Hey, Coach Messer, Brooke Weisbrot in the studio. Great to meet you, and welcome to the American. I know you're, look, you're looking forward to defending that title this season. I wanted to ask about Nay Hutton. You mentioned her, a Howard transfer, freshman of the year in the conference. And she's described as an undersized post but a relentless worker. So I know that fits right into your system. But what were the intangibles that you also liked about her? Um, the intangibles is our leadership off the court. Um, she uh, has done some a tremendous job of being intentional about building relationships with her coaching staff and uh, with her teammates. That's an intangible that speaks for itself. And um, she's a go-getter for me. Um, she's just a hard-nosed, undersized, Charles Barkley type, uh, type player, and I love it. And that fits right into what I, what I do. 
coach. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate the time and looking forward to seeing here what you can do with the Knights in year one. Thank you guys so much for having me. Looking forward to seeing you guys soon. And excited to see what Coach Messer can do here at the American here in year one. I mean, with the high expectations, but we're going to hear from some of her players, though, first. We've got Ashton Verholst and Anjanae Hutton joining us right now here in the American studios. And uh, curious to hear from the both of you in terms of what you've learned from Coach Messer here so far in her first year at UCF. Me personally, I've learned that we can't stop as a team, regardless on the court, off the court, in the community. Um, we just have to keep pushing. We're all coming from new programs, um, different coaches. We just got to buy in and do what Coach Messer tells us. I mean, I trust her. She's coming from Big 12, SEC, and she knows what she's doing. So, Yeah, I've learned that you, like, she teaches us you got to do a lot of the hard things, a lot of things you might not want to do, especially us with a lot of newcomers coming in, a whole new coaching staff. We're really going to have to put in that extra work, that extra time to create team chemistry and also everyone needs to buy into the system so that we can be as successful as possible. All right, our first question will be from Trace Traco of Sons of UCF. Uh, for each of you, describe that system. What's that style of play? What are we going to see when your season begins? We're going to see a lot of pick and roll action, a lot of pick and pop. Uh, we have pretty quick guards, so um, I expect them to get to the basket. We have really good rebounders. Um, we're very fast paced, so going to get up and down the floor. Yeah, like she said, very fast paced. Coach Messer really loves transition, too. She said she wants to get get up on defense, kind of pick up more in like the full court, too. So it's going to be a lot of, I mean, transition, fast paced type stuff. So she loves that. All right, our next question will be from Jason B of the Orlando Sentinel. Hey, Ashton, I'm just wondering, as one of the four or five returning players to this team, what's been your role this off season? What's going to be your role for this season? Um, as a, it's kind of funny because I remember coming in as like a freshman and everyone happened to show me the reins of not only like UCF campus, but college basketball in general. And that's kind of been, I think my role coming in has kind of been showing the new people the reins as far as, I mean, like, I guess campus, but also, I mean, under Coach Messer, because we were here a little bit earlier than they were, we got to meet her earlier. So um, I think that's kind of been my role more as a leader, um, being more vocal, kind of directing people, because obviously it's going to be hard for us to have team chemistry right away. So just kind of making sure we communicate more is something we've been having to work on. So, yeah. Go next to Kyle Nash of the Black and Gold Banner. Good to meet, good to meet you this morning, ladies. Uh, just one question I have is: you have practices here, preparing. You got your first bit of basketball coming up in a few weeks. What's kind of been the message or mantra throughout practice as you guys have been training? Energy, details, and toughness. Those three right there. If we have those, we're going to be good this season. That is Coach, uh, Coach Messer's motto, uh, as well as don't stop. So, yeah, won't stop is also yeah. That's her big like mantra. It's kind of like. Even though we've had a lot of obstacles thrown at us, I guess having a whole new team, whole new coaching staff, it's we're just going to have to work that much harder to really get to the level that we want to play at. So. And if I may, Nay, I have to ask, earlier Coach Messer compared you to Charles Barkley. What does that make your mind say? Hey, ladies, how you doing? Brooke Weisbrot in the studio. Great to talk with you. Uh, Nay, I, I would love to just get your take on you know, leaving a program like Howard where you had so much success, individual success, right? And it seems now that you're coming to a program where you want something, you know, bigger than that. You want some team get to the NCAA tournament. You talked about Coach having that experience, so you trust her. What is it about your personality that gels so well with her in this program? Man, me and Coach Messer just mesh really well. Um, I feel like my energy matches with hers. She's always uplifting, encouraging her her energy when we get like stops on defense or just really good plays. Like I love that about her. I love how she coaches the team. She never gives up on us. Um, she encourages a lot. I need that from a coach. Um, that plays a big role in confidence, I feel like, with me as well as my teammates. So coming from a very successful program, coming into one, as well as a coach that was successful, it's only up from here. Ashton, this is Mark Adams in the studio. Uh, Terry English recently passed away, your high school coach. He won 22 state championships, including with you. He was national coach of the year in 2021. 
and a, an influential person in your life. Reflect back on that relationship, what he has meant to you and to your career today and moving forward. He played a really influential role um, I, in my basketball career overall, my passion for basketball. So his recent passing obviously has affected me. I'm very upset about it, but it also inspires me to really go out this season and throughout the rest of my career and just, you know, like do everything he taught me to do, really just put my best foot forward and like be the player that he knows I, I can be. So, yeah. We'll go to a follow-up question from Kyle Nash. Uh, Nay, yeah, earlier uh, on we were talking to Coach. She compared you to Charles Barkley. What thoughts do you have about that comparison? Wait, can you repeat the question? Sorry, I didn't hear it. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, no, this was for Nay. Um, earlier on, uh, Coach, uh, Coach Messer compared you to Charles Barkley. How do you react to that? What's that make you feel? Man, it feels like a compliment. I mean, Charles Barkley, to me, he's very funny. Uh, I get that from my teammates a lot. I'm really goofy. I have a lot of energy. I'm always encouraging my teammates, very uplifting. I love to be out here. Um, Charles Bar Barkley, he's... He's different, and I'm different too, so I'll accept that. Thank you, Coach Messer. Thank the two of you so much for taking the time to join us. Really looking forward to seeing your team tip off here in just a few weeks. Thank you. Thank you.